again to this Love Encounter broadcast. God bless you so much for connecting with us today. I'm excited to know that you're watching today. And I'm excited to know that God is doing great things in your life. Praise the Lord. I know that God has protected you. God has kept you safe. God has healed you. And God is doing great things in your life. Praise God. Continue believing God for great things. God is ready to do amazing things in your life, great things in your life. Praise the Lord. The best is yet to come. And I know that you and I are believing for this together. I believe for your life. I believe God for your marriage. I believe God for your finances. I believe God for your education, for your career. I believe God for your future. That is why I'm here every day speaking the Word of God to you because that's all we can do is to speak the Word of God to our situation. Everything around us responds to the voice of God. So continue believing the Word of God and continue confessing the Word of God. Like I said last week, the Word of God contains everything that you need. When you believe the Word of God, the Word of God brings miracles, produces miracles, signs and wonders in your life. So if you're looking for a miracle, waiting for a miracle, for a breakthrough, all you need is the Word of God. Because once you believe the Word of God, the Word of God will produce miracles, signs and wonders in your life. If you're looking for a miracle, if you are waiting for a miracle, all you need is is get hold of the Word of God. When you get hold of it, it produces. When we believe the Word of God, the Word of God produces. When we confess it, the Word of God produces after its own kind. So that's why you got to believe, you got to confess what you believe. When we preach this Word of God, it produces miracles, signs and wonders to those that hear it, it carries it, it carries it. The Word of God, once the Word of God comes to you, it produces what it carries. It brings with it the power thereof. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's go in today's message. I'm excited to start this week. It's amazing what God is doing in our lives. It's amazing. Praise God. Let's go to Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Who gave himself for our sins? Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world this present evil world according to the will of God and our father Jesus gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us deliver us from this present evil world he died to save us from this evil world. This evil, present evil world. Present evil world. The world in which we live. The world in which we live. The societies in which we live. The communities in which we live. Places of work where we work. Neighborhoods where we live. This present evil world. This present situation where we are right now he saved us from this evil world you see there are evil things that happen around us there are evil things that happen around us evil world sickness poverty rejection lack confusion enemies, Paul said, pray for us that we might be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. So we got enemies. We got enemies. 
people who fight against us because of what we believe, because of the values we carry, because of the way we confess, the values of Christ in us, we get persecuted because of the message we carry. So now Jesus, according to Galatians 1 verse 4, Jesus himself died for us to save us not only from the evil world to come, but also from this present evil world. Because many people think that the death and burial, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ affected only the evil world to come or saved us from the evil world to come. That is half truth. You are going to heaven. You will go to heaven. You are saved. You are a child of God. And you will enjoy heaven forever. But Jesus also died for you to save you from this, this, this one, this evil, this present evil world. So he died for your sickness just as much as he died for your sins. He died and saved you from poverty just as much as he died to save you from your sins. On that tree on the cross, that same tree, that same time when Jesus died, he arrested the power of sin and destroyed it. At that very tree, at that very time, he also arrested the power of sickness and disease and infirmity. He arrested it and destroyed it. He also arrested the power of poverty and he destroyed it. So, so, so we are not here on the earth to suffer from sickness, to suffer from disease and pain while waiting for that life to come. So many children of God, so many believers are waiting for that life after. That is very good. And we are all waiting for that. We, we, we will enjoy it forever in the presence of God, in the presence of His Son, Jesus Christ. But I, wanna, I want you to know that while He was dying for that, He was also dying to save you from your sickness, from poverty, and from disease. So you don't have to suffer now waiting for that life hereafter. Eternal life begins now. Once you get saved, you begin to enjoy the blessing of salvation. You begin to enjoy the blessing of salvation. So when he died for us, the Bible says he saved us, delivered us from this evil, from this present evil world. But you see, he did not take us away from it. When he delivered us from this present evil world, he did not take us away from, from it. No, he left us here. But he saved us from it. And yet he left us here. So he saved us, he gave us the power he gave us the power to enjoy the life of God, the Zoe life, the full life of God. He, he, he gave us the power to enjoy perfect health. He gave us the power to enjoy perfect peace, nothing missing, nothing broken. He gave us the power to enjoy prosperity. He, he gave us the power to, to, enjoy, to enjoy Him and enjoy life. As we wait for the life hereafter. He gave us victory. He gave us victory. He gave us power to become victorious in our everyday life. So when he died on the cross, he was also thinking about your business. So, 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 so the gospel of Jesus Christ is relevant. It is relevant. It is relevant. So your business was involved. Your family is involved. Your physical body is involved. 
So the gospel of Jesus Christ is relevant. He became poor so that we become rich. He became poor so that we become rich. By his stripes we were healed. He abandoned heaven and he came and he experienced poverty in order to save us from poverty for us to become rich. The gospel is relevant. Is relevant. So, so many times we preach the gospel telling people what is to come. But we do not address what they are going through. The situations they are going through. The, the person that is suffering from cancer right now is suffering, is suffering, and that is hell. That is hell already. That is hell already. The person that, is div that, that, that got divorced yesterday and is losing millions of dollars because of divorce and, uh, and, and, the, and the kids are confused. They don't know where to go. They don't know if they go with daddy or they go with mommy. That is hell already. So the gospel addresses that issue. The gospel of Jesus Christ addresses that issue. I, uh, I remember the day I was driving in Kampala. And this heavy traffic. And it was very, very, very hot and, and, and heavy traffic. I was, you know, standing in one place for almost 45 minutes. Heavy traffic. Heavy traffic, and and prior to that, a, a motorbike came uh, across and uh, and scratched my car, and the and the guy just drove off and disappeared. And so my car is scratched. The guy who scratched it disappeared, just drove off, and uh, people are coming from left and right, and it's very hot, and it was chaos. The whole day is killed right there. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is, this is hell. And so this guy, he was preaching and he had a Bible in his hands and I was so happy to see him. I was so happy to see a preacher. At that very moment, I was happy. Uh, and and I, I, I lowered my window to listen to the good news. He was screaming and preaching and I was, I was excited. With a pure heart, I was excited to, to hear the good news. Because the man was holding a Bible in his hands and he, he's preaching. And when I lowered my window and he came close to my car, it was very hot, I was very tired, I was thirsty. He looked into my eyes and he says, if you don't accept Christ now, you will die in hell. You will die in hell. Hell is coming. Hell is coming. If you do not accept Christ right now, hell is coming. And that is true, but it's half truth. It's half truth. Is half truth because the gospel in the book he was holding can also address my situation where I was. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know if I've just lost a job. He doesn't know if I'm sick. He doesn't know, uh, you know, what is going on. He doesn't know what is going on in my life. Yes, hell is coming. He's right. He's right. Hell is coming. But the book he was holding addresses life here after and this present evil world I'm living in. My car has been scratched. He doesn't know how I feel. And so this is how we lose the souls. This is how we lose people. Once you go on preaching like that, just talking about life after this, the gospel sometimes becomes irrelevant. Because I'm like, okay, 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 let me, let me first get out of this hell that I'm facing right now. Then I will think about that hell that is to come. And, 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 and so I'm saying to this guy, I'm already in hell. This is hell. This is hell. I'm already in hell. This is real hell. So I need the gospel that addresses my issue right now. But also add the gospel that addresses the life to come. Because when I study the life of Jesus Christ and the message of Jesus Christ on the cross, he addressed the issues that we are facing right now and he addressed the life to come. And I'm not saying that we should forget reminding people about heaven and hell no, that's not what I'm saying. We should remind them to prepare 
for the life hereafter. But we should also make sure that we present the gospel in the way that it is relevant to a person that is going through divorce. A person that is sick. A person that is dying of cancer. The gospel addresses that issue. Children that have lost their parents. The gospel addresses that issue. The Bible has said here that he, that he might deliver us from this, this present evil world. What is in this evil world? Sickness. Rejection. Corruption. Death. Physical death. So he didn't die only to save us from the coming evil world. Only the coming evil world. But it was to save us from this and that to come. So my point here today is, child of God, you are here on the earth. You can enjoy perfect health. You can enjoy perfect peace. You can enjoy you can enjoy prosperity. You can enjoy good relationships. You can enjoy good marriage. And enjoy heaven also. So I don't want us to be here and suffer waiting. I remember the missionaries that came and preached to our, our forefathers. They told our forefathers, sell everything you have and follow Jesus. So people sold off their businesses. People, people stopped working. People stopped. Uh, they were discouraged going to school. They left politics. They left business because they were going to heaven. Up to today, Jesus hasn't come back. And Jesus is coming. We are coming closer and closer and closer. But let us not forget the kingdom of God must be manifested at your place of work. The kingdom of God must be manifested at your university. Live a, as a child of God and enjoy the blessing of God today as we wait for heaven. Because we will go to heaven. We will enjoy. We are born again. We love Jesus Christ and we are going there by his grace. Not by our works. We are going there by the grace of God. But the power of God has been given to us here on the earth. Let the kingdom of God come. The manifestation of Basilea. The manifestation of the kingdom of God. You can imagine the opportunity this young man had in this traffic jam. In, this, in, that, in that moment everyone is listening. Everyone is there and is Telling them you're going to die. You're going to die. No, that's not the good news. That's not the good news. That's not the good news. Because they are already in hell. They are suffering. They are suffering. They are confused. Tell them that Jesus loves them. Tell them about the life that is to come. The life that is to come. That, that life that is to come. But also let the gospel be relevant to a person that is suffering at that very moment. So we can manifest the kingdom of God where we are right now. Let us not be of so heavenly minded that we are of no earth, earthly use. Trust God for your job. I am trusting God for your job. I trust God that you will prosper because he has saved you from this evil world. I trust God that you are getting healed right now because he saved you from this evil world. I trust God for your marriage because he saved you from this present evil world. I trust God for your prosperity because he saved you from this present evil world. And you and I can experience the goodness of God in every area of our lives. Right here in our marriages, in our, at our places of work, in our churches, in our communities as we preach the gospel, expand the kingdom of God and we are taking over our societies and our communities. Praise God because greater is he in us than the one in the world. As we prepare the coming life. We are going to enjoy God forever. We will be in heaven forever. And we must prepare for that because Jesus is coming back soon. But don't sell your business. Jesus is coming back soon. But make sure you become relevant at your place of work. Jesus is coming back soon. But make sure your boss sees the manifestation of Christ through the work that you do. Praise God. 
Jesus is coming back soon, but buy more land and buy more buildings and prosper here on the earth. Do business. Enjoy the goodness of God. Prosper everywhere you go. Jesus died for you and he saved you from this present evil world. But he left you here to overcome it. To overcome it. Praise God. Don't give up on what you're doing. Don't give up on life. And say, ah, oh, we are waiting for heaven. Do not do that. Because we are here and we must see the kingdom of God coming right here. Can you think about what is happening in heaven right now? What is happening? Is there sickness? No. Is there poverty? No. Is there, are, are people crying? Are people complaining about politics, about that and that and that? No. Let us manifest what is happening in heaven in our homes. What is happening in heaven on our streets? I love street preachers. I love them and I enjoy them. I want to see the whole, the whole Kampala and, and all the cities in the world full of these people, bold, manifesting Christ with their Bibles in their hands, proclaiming the gospel. But preach the whole council. Tell people that Jesus is coming back and tell them that he loves them so much right now. He wants to serve them. He wants to heal them. He wants to settle them. He, he wants to bless them right now. Talk about the miracles of God and, and the goodness of God and the grace of God. And also tell people to prepare. Because Jesus is coming back. Those of you that are watching me right now. I want to declare in your life that God is taking you out of that situation. I want to declare in your life that he has saved you from this present evil world. The sickness that people are going through the disease and, and rejection and poverty. God has saved you. God wants you to live a good life. Goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. God wants you well before you even go to heaven. Praise the Lord. He's coming back soon. But let us enjoy eternal life right now. Eternal life is not that life to come. Eternal life is now and forever. That is eternal life. We enjoy God. We know God and his son whom he sent from now forever. But so the life to come, the life to come, the life to come when our master comes back and he takes us with him, that, was, that, that will be upgrading. We are, we, are, we are continuing. We are continuing the life of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But we start now to enjoy the life of God. This perfect peace. Nothing missing and nothing broken. So do not give up on life. Don't give up on life. The life you have has been given to you by him. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. The Zoe life. The very life of God. Do not give up. He has saved you from this present evil world. This present evil world. It can be around you, but not in you. It will not destroy you. It will not kill you. That disease will not kill you because you're saved. You will not lose your job because you're saved. You're a child of God. Don't give up. Let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you for the word that you've given us. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for perfect peace. Thank you for perfect joy. Thank you for prosperity and increase. Thank you, Lord, for healing us. Thank you for marriages. They are settled. Thank you for powerful ministries. Thank you for powerful businesses. Thank you, Father, because your children are joining politics and they are, and they are prospering in politics and they are joining businesses and they are prospering there. Thank you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. Thank you for people that you're serving. Thank you because the gospel becomes relevant. Becomes relevant. Becomes relevant. In Jesus' name. I pray for all of you that are sick right now. Let the kingdom of God be manifested in your life. Let the kingdom of God be manifested in your life. Receive peace. You are saved from this present evil 
world. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Let every sickness, let every disease depart from you right now in Jesus' name. And let the kingdom of God be manifested in your life. Begin to enjoy eternal life right now and forever in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you so much. If you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, accept him now so that you enjoy the life of God right now. And remember, Jesus is coming back soon. Believe him now. Receive him now. Let him take care of you. Heal you. Let goodness and mercy begin to follow you all the, 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 rest, the rest of your life. You can enjoy God right now. You don't have to divorce. You don't have to give up. Just give your life to Jesus and let his grace be sufficient in your life. He wants to take all those burdens from you. He wants to heal you right now. He wants to give you inner healing. You are broken. You are rejected. God loves you. He wants to heal you now. He wants to deliver you now. He wants to take care of your house right now. He wants to take care of your career right now. Give him your life and allow him to be enough in your life and more than enough in your life. Pray with me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now. I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I now receive all the finished work of the cross. And I begin right now to enjoy my life. Amen. God bless you so much. You've just accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you can begin right now to enjoy the life of God. God bless you so much. Please write to us. The phone numbers on your screen and the email addresses. I'd like to hear from you. Give us some testimonies and give us your prayer requests. We want to pray with you and stand with you. God bless you so much. See you next time.